Just the other day, I was kind of going through my closet and ran across this old minted hoodie. In fact, it's been a while since I've really thought about the Helium Network, but it's nearly two years since we first covered it on the channel. It's actually been closer to two and a half years, but this is kind of two years ago around this time frame, or spring of 2021, when Helium was really starting to kick up and it was before Helium hit its all time highs at nearly $60 per token. Many of us getting involved in Helium mining very early on and reaping some of the rewards. Some obviously who joined the network a little bit later are still stuck with a Bobcat that they received just a couple of weeks ago and have yet to turn it on. So with that said, we're gonna kind of go back as to where is Helium today? Is Helium going to recover? And I think that is the biggest question on everyone's mind because for a lot of people, they took these devices, packaged them up and put them up in the attic. Well, at least 50% of all people did, especially when you look at the metrics of the Helium network coverage. But we're gonna talk about some of the metrics today, some of the positive and negative things about Helium moving forward and whether or not this project will ever come back. If you're new here, my name is Alex. We talk about crypto, crypto mining, crypto passive income opportunities. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, smash up the like. But without further ado, let's run the video. Where is the Helium Network today and, and where is it headed? What are some of the recent changes outside of just the Solana migration? What's coming down the road and you're talking about in the next two months, two and a half months, if you will. And what other things outside of Helium are possibly impacting or impeding its potential growth and adoption? So. First off, where is the network today? As you look at some of the statistics in the new Explorer, there's a lot more data, there's a lot more information, there's a lot more transparency as to what is happening behind the scenes. Now, as you can see, the overall mobile and the IoT devices, all of this has now like really been, uh, I, don't, I don't think the right word is segregated, but it's really been distinguished as to what belongs where. And it, instead of everything just being kind of all in one place, it's now been really distinguished as to what's IoT, what is mobile, and h and in and of themselves. So in this instance, you can see the overall mobile hotspots currently online or active at 3,800 and active hotspots at about 460,000. Now that is the only active hotspots. What is interesting to me is they don't show the total hotspots um, because that probably would not be uh, something to be truly proud of. As you can see, about 50% of the hotspots are actually online. And so when you look at the online statistics versus the active, less than 50% with the mobile hotspots, but uh, with the IoT hotspots, less than, or just around, right around 50% currently online. Now, that said, that's probably been a, a leading factor of this is primarily the fact that we are still, in my opinion, in a bear market, right? The overall earnings haven't been as well. If Helium was at a higher price, we would probably see a lot more Helium hotspots online instead of in my hand. Now, that being said, that considering a lot of the changes and a lot of the things that have happened within the Helium network, it is still impressive to have nearly half a million hotspots currently operational around the world. Now, Outside of just the network itself and the amount of hotspots that are currently on the Helium network, who actually uses Helium? Now, this has been an ongoing topic and debate topic and a conversation topic and a drama topic. It's been a, all kinds of topic when it comes to the Helium network. Uh, in fact, it's been one that's been the Achilles heel, if you will, uh, that pushed uh, Helium into the spotlight in a negative sense, comparatively speaking, to some of its prior supposed partners. That said, they've really done and up their game as to pushing and letting everyone know who actively uses Helium or who has partnered up with Helium. I think this overall should have been the very first iteration of Helium and showcasing who are the hotspots, who are the users, who are the community tools, who are the roaming, who are the integrations. Uh, so being able to show this makes it very transparent for individuals that are looking at 
who uses Helium, what tools are available for the ecosystem, um, and different integrations, who are the manufacturers. This comes all in one place, and I think within this ecosystem section of Helium, uh, it's an extremely valuable resource. So you can at any time go through here and see who has integrated within the Helium network, who actively uses uh, the data packets and the IoT service, and then who are the manufacturers, Broan, Calchip, uh, and a few others out there as well. So I think this is a huge, huge uh, plus in a step in the right direction. This is at least my opinion for Helium, especially having been uh, em embroiled with that, that prior controversy regarding a, a few quote unquote partners. But there are certain projects, certain companies that are utilizing Helium that make me very excited. Uh, that one of those being Demo. We've talked about Demo very early on. For many of you who got in very early mining uh, Demo, whether that was just through your phone connected to your car or through the actual hardware device, uh, many of you made thousands, tens of thousands of dollars uh, with Demo, especially after the token had pumped. Uh, we'll probably have to have an updated video on the project because many of you made quite a bit of money on Demo. And I think in uh, from some of the recent details I've been seeing and some of the progress that the a company is made there's a lot more coming in the future it makes me very excited and the the collective partnership with helium does bode well for demo and so even though there are some uh, oftentimes a lot of things are overcast with a lot of negatives underlying that is a lot of positives at least in my opinion within where the helium network is today now if you look at the token price and only look at the and focus on the token price Obviously, it is uh, lackluster <laughs> by uh, and the overall appeal that a lot of people had when it comes to helium in the first place was the profitability for mining helium. Now, will helium ever go back to fifty dollars? Will it ever even go back to five is not really the, the point of this video. But will helium go back to the adoption and the utilization that it was boasting back in the bull market? I think there's still an opportunity for Helium to still to exist. I think there's still a lot of road ahead and the type of adoption Helium is going to have to have, especially after moving off of its own layer one onto Solana, that will on only time will really tell how that whole process goes. I mean, we're only into it about two, three weeks um, and we still have the rest of the year ahead, not to mention the happening that is gonna be happening in August. I think we'll see even more. I don't think there will be a direct impact to the token price itself as far as the Helium token price. Um, but obviously, we could see a direct impact to the amount of users that have hotspots online. Because for some people that were making enough to, to make it make sense to sit on their desk, um, once the happening goes through, it may no longer make sense. So something to be cognizant of. And when you look at the overall transition, the impact of Helium's trend, uh, migration to Solana has been a very, very positive one. There's been a lot of very positive things about Helium moving to Solana. And we talked about this a, a while back in the very beginning when this was originally announced. Um, yes, there are good things. There's good things and bad things about everything. I think there was more good than bad about Helium going to another layer one instead of the issues uh, and attempting to constantly update their own layer one. So I think the overall, this transition process was extremely smooth, comparatively speaking, when it comes to about 350,000 Helium devices being migrated over to Solana. There was a, po a lot of positive metrics that came out of it as well. And so this overall transition was very positive. Uh, there's still some things that are still kind of coming out that still have to be smoothed over the there are certain features that users are looking for now that they're part of the Solana ecosystem that still have not at least been fully built out. They're, they're somewhat limited, but I think over time those will come. And, and to briefly mention some of those, uh, I think the biggest is the ability to trade the IoT token. Uh, in fact, the two DEXs primarily, even though the uh, Treasury itself is going to eventually have the sustainability to be able to trade within the um, Treasury itself, there's been a lot of push to trade on DEXs on Solana for the IoT token. You also have to be very careful because there are fake tokens out there. So do verify before you trade any tokens. 
But on SoulScan, you can see that there's really only two DEXs that offer any to trading opportunity of Helium in IoT or another uh, crypto. And so Orca and Radium are really the only two. I mean, that's literally all that exists. And Orca, sadly, is not available for US users. Now, up to you as to whether you want to use a VPN or not. It's not my place to recommend or not recommend utilizing a service like that to facilitate trading. But as you can see, that's where 99.9% .9 of all the volume, you can see about $28,000 worth of volume in the last 24 hours. That's not a whole lot, but considerably speaking, some of the other runner ups uh, are not nearly even close. So do be cognizant that this is still a there's still a lot of development, still a lot of things that have to happen before this is very smooth. And it's just kind of one of the the pains of transitioning and starting kind of from the beginning on many things. Uh, this is Orca, as you can see, available, unavailable in your country or region. Uh, this specifically in the US radium is very limited to what they have as well. So just be cognizant of that. And the last thing I kind of really just want to leave off on is some of the metrics that are being developed. Armand, uh, he and I have had our TIFFs and TAFs, if you will, before in the past, some uh, healthy agreements and disagreements on certain things that have been done by the Helium Network. I think in the end, you know, you can always have a positive agreement to something and a negative agreement to something. And in the end, still have a, a, a healthy discussion. And I think one of the big positives Armand has done for the Helium Network is provide some of the metrics for the uh, overall network usage from the IoT and mobile side. The av availability for users to see this type of data bodes well for the Helium ecosystem. I think this is a huge plus. As far as transparency, obviously, uh, this is very minute in scale to the overall valuation of Helium still based on the current token price. But over time, uh, adoption and once you have a transition like this, things take time to come to fruition. And so I think the same will be for this as well. That said, I want to briefly touch on uh, Kadena and specifically a project on Kadena called Crank. Now, Crank, I've known about Crank for a very long time before Crank was even a thing, um, when Crank was just an idea. Uh, I knew about the overall project. And if you look at under its ecosystem, um, it is one of the under the infrastructure uh, tabs as far as a node uh, right there beside Flux. Crank's is, Crank has been around for a very long time. Um, I'll have a, to have a full video on Crank discussing at least some of the things, my ideas, my thoughts, and discuss how Crank is is different than Helium. But to briefly touch on some of the things happening with Crank, the, the, it's currently in beta. Uh, the um, public launch is only something that you can join. So if you're looking to uh, participate in the public onboarding, um, after beta is over, public onboarding will be available and is scheduled in Q3 of 2023. You can kind of check their roadmap as to some of the details that they have available. And you can see the overall total hotspots currently uh, the online versus all ratios is a lot higher than that of Helium's, but overall minute in scale of just around 2,600 hotspots compared to 460,000. Uh, so one two hundredth, if you will, of hotspots that are currently on the Helium network. Now that said, what you're able to do with a lot of the hotspots, including a lot of your racks, is you're able to migrate them over from the Helium network to mine Crank, which is built on Solana. So I think there's a lot of things that are very positive about Crank. Like I said, I will have to have a full video later on discussing the project. I've known and watched its development for the last several months uh, from just a concept to actually coming to fruition. So it's been very exciting to watch from behind the scenes, uh, but I think it is about time to come out with a video and discuss a little bit more details as to what my opinion is on whether or not Crank is legit and how it will be or will not be successful in the future. I think there's a lot of big pluses for Crank, a lot of big positives and how they are stepping up their game and, and how they're approaching the IoT space. And it makes me very excited. But like I said, I will leave that for another video. 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Where do you think the Helium network stands today? Uh, do you think that uh, it is time to go back and plug in your Helium hotspots? Or are you going to save yourself uh, the trip to the attic and uh, keep it, uh, you know, collecting dust up there? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Helium network, the transitions happening and what the future of it looks like. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Crank. If you're uh, involved currently into the in the project, comment that below. If you enjoyed the video, smash up the like. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.